Hey guys, what's up? It's Regisar here, and welcome to Know Your Enemy, my weekly series of bossing guides designed to teach you how to kill the most fearsome creatures in RuneScape. In this week's episode, we'll be covering the fearsome Queen Black Dragon using the magic attack style. Always keep in mind, regardless of the boss you fight, death is always a possibility, and you should always have an escape plan if you are not experienced. Let's move on to a bit more information about the Queen Black Dragon. Knowing your enemy is half the battle when killing a boss in RuneScape. Down below you'll see a list of information regarding the Queen Black Dragon, including combat level, life points, attack styles, weakness, and even max hits for most of her attacks. Make sure you familiarize yourself with this information, and pause the video if need be, then continue. Knowing the objective of how to kill the boss you are fighting is always helpful, and information about the minions accompanying them is even more helpful. Take time to familiarize yourself with the information provided below, and then continue on with the video when ready. Information regarding the attacks, special attacks, and many abilities the boss may use against you in combat is extremely helpful. Take time to familiarize yourself with the list of attacks, special attacks, and abilities that the Queen Black Dragon may use against you when fighting her. Continue on with the video when ready. It's always good to be confident in your skills before you face off against the boss. I would recommend completion of the Song from the Depths quest before facing against the Queen Black Dragon, as well as the minimum levels li listed in the skills below. Having the right weapons and armor can mean the difference between surviving your boss fight or becoming that boss's next meal. Take time to familiarize yourself with the list of weapons and armor below that you can use when killing the Queen Black Dragon. Always remember you use the best weapons and armor that you can afford or that are available to you. At the end of the day, the loot is the most important part from killing a boss. On screen now you'll see a list of possible rewards and loot that you can get from killing the Queen Black Dragon. Now that we've taken care of the basics, let's move on to some possible combat bars, setups, and inventories that you can take when killing the Queen Black Dragon with magic. If you prefer the lightning fast attacks of a wand and offhand mage weapon, then this setup is definitely for you. Always remember to up or downgrade items as you see fit if you are unable to afford them or do not have the level requirements for them. Here's a combat bar for this setup. If you prefer the power and accuracy of a staff, then this setup is definitely for you. Always remember to up and downgrade items accordingly. Here's a combat bar for this setup, guys. For those of you that find comfort in using a wand plus a shield, this setup is for you. Remember to upgrade and downgrade accordingly to what you have and do not have. And here's the combat bar for this setup. Once you're geared up and ready to go, it's time to head off to the Queen Black Dragon. The simple and easiest way to get there is going to be through the Home Teleport spell. Simply select the Home Teleport spell, and then teleport to Port Serim. It's going to take a little bit for the spell to load up, so just be patient. Once the teleportation spell is complete, you'll arrive at the Port Sarim Lodestone. Once you're out, simply head to the northwest, up towards the Queen Black Dragon's Cave. Once there, head inside, and then simply head down the pathway. I rather actually like this dungeon quite a bit, just because of the design. Now, if you have the agility level to do so, which is 50, simply go over here and slide down the shortcut. Otherwise, you'll have to walk all the way down the normal way. Once down here, just make your way over to the summoning portal, and you're here. Once you arrive at the Queen's portal, you want to make sure you're prepared for the battle ahead. Make sure that you have your quick curses set to protect item, protect from range, and torment. Soul Split works good as well. However, if you don't have any of the curses, Rigor and Protect from Range will do you just as much good as it will with curses. Once you're ready, head inside the summoning portal, and then immediately move down here next to the first artifact. Drink your stat restoring potions, drink your overload, and drink your super anti-fire or anti-fire that you brought with you. Then, wait for the queen to be ready to be attacked. Once she's ready to attack, Unleash Hell. Start using as many of your abilities as possible. Make sure to allow each ability to finish before you start using another one. Always make sure to alternate between your abilities. That way, you always have an ability to use. Now, throughout the fight, the Queen Black Dragon will be throwing her various different attacks at you, such as the firewalls, souls, and everything like that. So always be prepared for that. If you see a firewall coming towards you, make sure your way through the hole that is in the opening of that firewall to avoid as much damage as possible. 
Now, with as much damage as you're dealing to her, if you were using Soul Split, you might not actually need to move from that firewall. You might be able to deal quite a bit of damage and avoid, you know, avoiding it altogether. Now, as you see right here, she may spawn a firewall in an area, if you run away from it, you may not be able to avoid it and may not be able to get through that hole. But, you know, that's how it goes. Now that we're on the second phase, this is where she is able to summon up to two firewalls and start summoning the tortured souls. This is where you want to start paying a lot of attention to what happens with the Queen Black Dragon. Notice there that I was able to make my way through the little holes. Sometimes you may not be able to get through that. Other times you might accidentally clip into one of the walls. But, you know, it's things that happen like that. Just make sure that you're focused on killing the Queen Black Dragon. Don't focus your efforts on any of the souls or anything like that. Now, what you want to do to actually avoid the soul's uh, chaotic cloud is to wait two seconds after it's spawned to immediately move behind it. This will lure the cloud, behind, cloud into the soul and damage it. Now, it takes two clouds to actually kill one of the tortured souls, so always keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be the tortured soul that you run its attack into either. You can actually run it into the little giant worms that they spawn. Here she's showing off the skin change ability. Now this is actually a little bit maddening at times. As you can see right there, I lowered the chaotic cloud, both of the attacks into one of them, and it ultimately killed one of them. <coughs> now as you can see right here, the um, queen's actually using her skin change ability. She's actually changed to the worst one possible for us in this situation. Since we're using magic, we want her to change to the other crystal form instead of changing into this form. This is actually bad. But we can power through that since we have very strong abilities. Now, at times, the souls will randomly teleport towards you and you might not be able to avoid the attacks altogether. Which is why we bring food. We can avoid that damage quite easily, so no need to worry. Simply keep killing her, well, reducing her HP. We're not killing her just yet, but reduce her HP as much as possible, um, and try your best to actually um, avoid standing on the platforms where the crystals are for too long. You don't actually want to take damage from those. Those deal about 1,500 if you stay on them for too long, and that's not good. But, all in all, once you have uh, damaged the queen further enough, you'll be able to tag the fourth piddle pillar and claim your prize, which awaits for you at the bottom of the staircase. So, head on down the staircase, and make your way to the Dragonkin Coiffer, and claim your loot. But, I hope you guys found this video very informative. If you did, then feel free to leave a like rating. And, if you're new around here, and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I will be putting out bossing guides every week from now on. And, guys, feel free to leave your feedback, and even suggest the next bossing guide. Other than that, guys, I've been Ray Desaro. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you so very much for watching. Peace.